Hi there, everyone. Um, my name is Daniel, um, and I run Nordic Anglers, a web shop uh, that sells just everything you would ever need for, for fly fishing. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to tie the banana salmon fly. This is one of the patterns that has been has been hyped the most in the past couple of years because it basically just catches a lot, a lot of fish. I'm going to do this in a bit of a variation uh, compared to, to, the, uh, to the completely original one. So we're going to call this the banana variant. Um, but it's a great fly. It has a great, great, a bit different color scheme. Um, and it's just an awesome, awesome fly for all the salmon fishing in both Denmark and, uh, and the rest of uh, Northern Europe. As I said, this fly is, is really, really remarkable. It has caught so many fish uh, throughout Northern Europe. Um, and, uh, and in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to tie this. And I'm going to do that now. Here goes den vanlige, or the usual, if you wanna if you wanna translate that. But it, it does not sound as good in in English as it does in in Swedish. So den vanlige. Um, we need a tube for this one, of course. And uh, and here I have the uh, 1.8 millimeter tube. And you could use the Pro uh, Classic tube in 2.2 as well. Uh, I like this uh, this 1.8 because it's relatively stiff. So it, 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 it's just really strong and really durable. And, uh, and on this you can use all the future fly and you can use all the pro stuff. So, so basically that's why I use this. Of course you can, uh, and, and on this you can add, a, I think this is a pro, um, pro sports fisher US tube, but the uh, future fly ones will, will fit as well. Um, you can change the size of these uh, as much as you like, depending on how big you want the fly. I want this to be a fairly large fly for fishing the early part of the season. So that's why I've used this. I think this is 13 millimeters and the other one here is 10, but they're available in five millimeters as well. Um, and, and of course, uh, this is basically to, to make a really easy body, but also to give some weight to the fly so it will fish the second it hits the water. Um, which I think is really really cool. The way of and style of tying this is is a really really good way of doing a lot of different patterns. Basically, you have a US tube, then you can add a different a different amount of wings to this fly, and then you'll have you know just a ton of variety. For this one, we're going to use three different wings. We're going to use a go uh, yellow, uh, an orange, and then a fiery brown, which is also the color for the particle. A hackle, some jungle, some artificial jungle cock, and then a bit of flesh, and that's it. And you can of course change this. I see a lot of people using this fly with a silver US tube instead, and then um, and then basically just uh, just a chartreuse and then a black wing, um, uh, which uh, in in a variety of different uh, uh, of different uh, you know uh, different details, uh, kind of makes up the same fly and, and a really really highly popular pattern as well. Looks quite a lot like the Gaula greenish, which is another video I've done. And um, so I'm starting out with the yellow here. Um, and uh, and uh, for these larger salmon flies, one of the important, most important things is that you do not overdo it. You do not have too much material, and it's also uh, important that you keep some of the uh, the coarser, longer uh, hairs here. The first wing, the yellow, is going to be our basically our standard wing. So I'm going to have this uh, approximately two times the length of the uh, of the U.S. tubes. Uh, tube that I have chosen. I think perhaps no, this is a bit too little. I'm gonna have a bit more of the yellow. Sorry about that, but you know, for the video it has to be just right. <laughs> for you guys out there, for you out there it has to be just right. <laughs> I'm gonna take another small bundle of uh, of yellow. Um, you can use both Arctic Fox uh, and Marble Fox for especially for the two uh, the two first wings. For the two first wings, we don't need it to be as big, and uh, the Arctic Fox is not as long and as big as the uh, as the actual um, as the actual Marble Fox. So so we're gonna use. You could use. I think I think I'm using uh, Marble Fox for all of this because that's what I have. But but if you want, you can use uh, Arctic Fox for the for the first part. 
So I'm going to take a small bundle of the yellow here, make it approximately two times the length length of the uh, of the US tube, and basically just apply a lot of pressure so it's it's secure and it stays there. This is going to pop up, um, and that's okay because uh, there is a small dent from where the US tube begins, and, and this will force the first of these wings to kind of pop up a bit, as you can see there. But that's okay, because the other wings are gonna, it's, it's gonna help move the wing up into the current and make it more lively, but the other wings are gonna compensate for that, so, so your fly will look great in the box and, you know, on Instagram and stuff, if, if that's important to you. Then we're gonna take a, a small amount of the orange one, about the same size of the bundle as, as with the yellow. Um, but this has to be slightly longer. So I'm gonna leave a bit more of the longer, coarser um, uh, hairs in there, and I'm gonna remove all the woolly part again as well, as I did before. I'm gonna force the yellow wing down, and as, as you can see now, this should be slightly longer. Um, because we want to, to create this drop shape and this tapering of the wing to make this fly swim as perfect as possible. There we go. Just apply a lot of pressure so you don't need to use too many wraps of the uh, of the tying thread because um, if you do that you're going to have a very bulky head. And, and since, um, at least on this variation of the fly, we're not going to do a cone head to cover up our head, then um, then you, you, you want to be a bit careful about the amount of tying thread you're using on this part. I did two more just to make sure that uh, the fly is, is, is as strong and durable as possible. And with the second wing in place, it's time for the third wing. And the third wing is going to be this fiery brown. And this is going to be uh, longer, even longer still than the other two. And, and, and quite a bit longer than the other two because, again, we want to, to make this, this drop shape in the water. For this fly, that's that's what fish is the best, and and what uh, every one of the the every one of the really experienced salmon anglers I've talked to uh, is stressing that that is really important to have have a fly that fishes correctly. Um, Michael Frodin in particular really really is is adamant about this. So I took and and as you can see, the wing here is quite a lot longer than the uh, than the uh, the Arctic fox. Um, and the marble fox is, is longer, and uh, and so for this longer part of the wing, I highly recommend the uh, the uh, the marble fox. Again, I'm gonna remove some of the uh, some of the wool from this, and preparing your materials the right way, setting up your materials the right way is 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 really a crucial part of making making your flies uh, have the desired design. gonna measure this out this actually looks really really good let's see how how I'm, I'm, I'm leaving all the longer fibers all the all these coarser hairs I'm leaving all of those in the in in this fly um, because uh, I, I want these to 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 give it that that special tapering This is slightly more dense than the two other wings. I should take my comb. I don't know where that is. I'm not going to use it then. And then again, as I said, this is going to be longer. So I, I carefully measure out how long this is going to be. And then I place it on top of the other two, but still also in a way that it, it covers a bit of the other two wings. with my scissor trying to get as close as I possibly can 
this scissor for some is, is a bit mangled in the tip. I don't know what I've done to it, but <laughs> I've not been kind, <laughs> that's for sure. So I'm gonna take swap to another one. You can see how much closer I can get with this uh, this renowned scissor. There we go. And then for the for the you know the the front hackle I'm gonna use an Ewing um, uh, hen saddle. It it does not necessarily has to be a Ewing. It just has to be a soft hackle feather um, uh, because uh, that will that will make the fly just just really come together with uh, with the with the with the drop shape here um, up in front. And because this is a fairly large fly, of course I'm gonna take one of the larger feathers here from the topmost part of the of the of the hen saddle and the color here is this nice nice uh, very very light blue and that is important for the pattern as well just gonna find the right feather no not that one I want a feather that's fairly long has fairly long uh, hackles but also is fairly broad hmm. This, this, on this there is, because this fly is, is actually quite big, there is slightly less of the really, really big ones than what I, I want to get it completely perfect for this one. That one or that one. That's gonna be this one. Gonna remove um, the lower part of the feather here because we don't need this and it's just gonna be in the way. And then I'm gonna carefully brush all the hackle fibers back, all the way up to the tip. So it's gonna be easier for me to tie down, but also to turn. Then I'm gonna tie this in with the tip, um, uh, pointing forward, the, uh, the top side of the feather pointing towards me, pointing upwards. So when I turn it, the natural curve of the feather is gonna, is gonna swing back, um, and 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 kind of curl around the wing. I'm gonna hold everything here in place, and then I'm gonna start turning the hackle, making sure that all my hackle fibers are pointing backwards, so their natural curl is is in line with the rest of the fly here, and then. Very carefully, I'm going to move the feather here up in front of the the last point where I turned, where I tied down the uh, the wings. And this way, I'm going to cover up all the uh, all the parts of the fly that I that I tied um, uh, where where I tied down the uh, the actual wings, and then you can see the natural curve is going to gonna make this hackle here this front hackle look really really awesome and point backwards cut away the hackle stump fold everything back and now I have a strong durable fly that has a very very s small and uh, and nice looking head I have everything um, uh, placed the right way, the hackle is, is folding back, and then I'm going to add the uh, jungle cut. And uh, for this, I'm going to use the size small Pro artificial jungle cut. Uh, the Pro jungle cock is, is the best artificial jungle cock I have ever come across. Um, it's really strong. It's very durable. Um, it it keeps its shine and its and its its you know its looks for <laughs> more than one season. Um, and it's also it's also the 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 the, junk, the artificial junk cock I've seen that looks most like the real thing. These I'm gonna you can manipulate them a bit with your fingers and your nails. So I'm gonna I'm gonna bend it a bit into shape. And for this I want for this fly and this style of of salmon fly I want a junk cock that is approximately the same length as the uh, as the U.S. tube. So that's a, that's another thing to to keep in mind and, and another another way of, of measuring out your materials in an easy way, um, so it, it gets the right uh, proportions. Let's see, I slightly curled it. I'm gonna add this to the side of the fly here.
apply some pressure. There you have it. And as the completely finishing touch, I'm gonna take a bit of angel hair, just a small bundle. Um, this color is, is a mix of gold and orange and red and, and a lot of different things. And then I'm gonna add this to the wing. So it's gonna curl around the, the fly here and, and be placed almost on the shoulders of the fly. And some of these are a bit too long now. I don't want them to be want them to be approximately the same length as, as the, the, the last of the wings. So if, if you have too much, then be sure not that the only thing you're cutting is the uh, is the flesh, not the uh, not the actual wing itself. This is gonna be the finishing touch. Cutting away the lift over angel hair and there you have it now all there is left to do is is to simply just make a whip finish um, and of course if you want you can add a you can add a cone head to this if your head is a bit big or or you just like the cone heads you can add a, a cone head i would recommend a gold one but um i think that that mine here is <laughs> It's really nice. My my head here is has the the complete the right shape and stuff. So I'm just gonna give this a bit of varnish. The uh, the way to do this is, is if you really want this to to pop out and and be uh, really really good, then you should you should add more than one layer of varnish. If it's just for 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 durability, then one layer is enough. But if you want that shiny hue and and kind of that, uh, that small bulky head that that looks so well on on these flies you'll have to apply varnish more than one time um, you'll have to let it sit let it dry and then you can you can apply more varnish uh, uh, one, once this has has dried out but um well basically here it is the uh, denvanlia the usual um i don't know if this is this is as close to the original patterns that I could uh, I could locate on, uh, on online but there's probably something I'm doing a bit different than what the original fly was made like so uh, so we're gonna call it a variant uh, just to be on the safe side um, but uh, here it is Den Vanlie, the usual variant I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Um, here is the, the actual fly and, uh, and at Nordic Anglers, our web shop, you will be able to buy the full and complete material kit for exactly this fly. So if you go to Nordic Anglers um, and, and look up the, the material kits, there is one for this particular fly that you can buy all the materials with one click and, uh, and you'll be ready to tie these um, uh, for, for all your salmon fishing. So. Um, Thank you a lot for watching. Um, swing by Nordic Anglers if you need fly tying or any other fly fishing related items. We have a huge, huge selection of all sorts of different goodies. <laughs> Otherwise, the only thing left to say is I wish you all the best of luck out on the water.